Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss the anti-cancer agents in easy way. In the anti-cancer agents, we come across with the so many types of drugs and these agents include the so many types of category of drugs. For example, these drugs may be classified as alkylating agents, anti-metabolites, hormone and their analogs and so many types of category of drugs are included in the anti-cancer agents. And remembering the classification of anti-cancer agents is not an easy task. But today in this video, we will see how easily we can remember the anti-cancer agents by using few of the drug suffixes as well as few of the infixes and by using few of the logical reasonings. For example, if a drug is having a suffix trexate, the trexate indicates they are the anti-folate agents. We have one of the drug methotrexate, which is having the suffix as trexate, which indicates it is an antifolate agent. And the suffix tican indicates they are the topoisomerase 1 inhibitors. One of the drug in this category is the topotican. Suppose if a drug is having a suffix ifin, it indicates that the drug is a SCRM, select 2 estrogen receptor modulator. For example, we have one of the drug raloxifene. In the raloxifene, the suffix is the ifin. Similarly, if a drug is having a suffix like mustin, it indicates it's an alkylating agent. We have so many types of drugs. For example, carmustin. Here, mustin indicates they are the alkylating agents. And sometimes we can use the infix. That is the word in between the name. For example, the term ESTR, EST, indicates it is an estrogen agonist. For example, you can observe that in the ethanyl estradiol, the ESTR indicates it is an estrogen. But at the same time, we can observe a small difference in this infix. For example, we can observe GSTR, gesture. This indicates it is a progestin analog. For example, the magistrol. In the magistrol, you can observe ESTR, but this ESTR is prefixed by G. So it is not a estrogen, it is a progestin. Magistrol is a progestin analog. Similarly, the suffix E strand. So here you can observe ESTR indicates the estrogen related drug and ANT is the antagonist. So E strand indicates they are the estrogen antagonists. One of the drug is the Fulvi strand which is having the suffix E strand which, which is an anti-estrogen. And another suffix is the TINIB. TINIB indicates they are the tyrosine kinase inhibitors. We have a lot of drugs in this category. One of the drug is the imatinib. Similarly, mistane. Mestane indicates a steroidal aromatase inhibitor. One of the drugs is the eximistane. And the suffix lutamide indicates they are the anti-androgens. We have so many drugs again. The one of the drugs is the flutamide. Here lutamide indicates they are the anti-androgens. In this way, we can use so many types of suffixes as well as infixes in order to remember the drugs in the anti-cancer agents very easily. Now let us see the classification of anti-cancer agents and how easily we can remember by using these types of suffixes. Anti-cancer agents can be classified into different categories. The first one is the alkylating agents, second one is anti-metabolites, third one is the plant derivatives, fourth one is the hormone analogs, and fifth one is the antibiotics, and sixth one is the miscellaneous category where a lot of drugs are present which are acting by different mechanisms. So let us go one by one. First one is the alkylating agents. So these alkylating agents can be further classified into different categories based on the chemical aspects. So let us start with the first one, nitrogen mustards. So these nitrogen mustards are having a common structure like this. So here the nitrogen is present which is attached with an aliphatic chain and this is the alpha carbon and this is the beta carbon. At this beta carbon a chlorine is present. So this group is nothing but the beta chloroethyl group which is attached to the amine so it is co commonly called as beta chloroethyl amino group is present in the nitrogen mustards it may be present for two times in the molecules so sometimes we can also indicate this with the bis bis indicates the beta chloroethyl group is present twice on the nitrogen and these alkylating agents can be indicated by the suffix mustin mustin indicates they are coming from the mustards which are acting like the alkylating agents for these alkylating agents, the beta chloroethyl amino group is important, which is responsible for the alkylation of the DNA. So these drugs are going to acting on the DNA and they can produce the inter or intra-strand cross-linkage. This cross-linkage in the DNA results in the 
inhibition of the DNA replication, thereby it can inhibit the cell replication. In this way, alkylating agents are going to produce the alkylation of the DNA, thereby they inhibit the DNA replication. So among these drugs can be classified based on the suffix mustin. Must indicate they are the alkylating agents. So we have the two drugs like the bendamustin as well as estramustin. Estramustin is a nitrogen mustard combined with the estrogenic properties. So that what you call the estramustin. Similarly, these drugs can have another suffix phosphamide. So one of the drug is the iphosphamide and another drug is the cyclophosphamide. So here phosphamide indicates they are the phosphorus containing alkylating agents. FOS indicates the phosphorus group and uh, in the olden days previously the phosphorus group is indicated by PHOS but nowadays it is indicated by FOS. So cyclophosphamide is the old name but the new names of the drugs involve the FOS which indicates the phosphorus containing derivatives. So phosphamide is a phosphorus containing alkylating agent. Similarly other drugs can be classified based on the group attached to the nitrogen. So one of these drugs is the meclorithamine. In the meclorithamine, the methyl group is present on the nitrogen, which is a simple alkylating acid. And another one is the chlorambucil. In the chlorambucil, you can observe on the nitrogen, phenylbutyric acid is present. This phenylbutyric acid can be represented as bucil. Bucil indicates the, the butyl carboxylic acid, which is attached with the phenyl ring. So that is the chlorambucil. Similarly, another one is the Melphalan. In the melphalan on the nitrogen you can observe a large group. This group is nothing but an amino acid. We can easily identify this amino acid as a phenylalanine. So this phenylalanine is indicated in the suffix as phalan. So phalan indicates phenylalanine group is present on the nitrogen and it is a nitrogen mustard. Melphalan is a one of a nitrogen mustard with a phenylalanine group on the nitrogen. In this way, these are the various drugs involved in the first category, nitrogen mustards within the alkylating acids. Now let us the second category within the alkylating acids, they are the nitrosoureas. Nitrosoureas are having a common structure like this. And again, you can observe here the nitrogen is attached with a beta chloroethyl side chain. And this side chain is present on the nitrogen of the urea and it may be present on one nitrogen or both of the nitrogens. And apart from this, one of the nitrogen is attached with an NO group that is a nitroso group. So that's why they are called as nitrosoureas. And these nitrosoureas are again acting like alkylating agents. So they are again indicated by the suffix mustin. So we have two drugs like the carmustin and lomustin. So mustin indicates it is an alkylating agent. It may be a nitrogen mustard or it may be nitrosourea. Here carmustin and lomustin are the nitrosoureas. Third one is the sulfonate esters. This is the structure of the sulfonate esters and you can observe here the methane sulfonate group is present on both of these sides which is forming an ester. So these are the methane sulfonate esters. So here because they are sulfonate ester, the sulfone can be represented with a suffix sulfan where O is replaced with the A. Sulfan indicates they are the sulfonate esters. So here we have two drugs like the busulfon as well as triosulfon. Both of these drugs are methane sulfonate esters and fourth category in the alkylating agents is the aziridines so one of the drug in this category is the thiotepa thiotepa is having structure like this and is one of the old drug which is having the three aziridine rings attached with the phosphorine group but nowadays this is having very little use as an anti-cancer agent and finally the miscellaneous category of drugs within the alkylating agents so we have the drugs ending with the suffix carbazine it is not the carbamzine, it is a carbazine. Two of the drugs having this suffix is the dacarbazine and procarbazine. The suffix of these drugs can be derived from the structural features. For example, these drugs are having one of the important functional group that is a carboxamide or carbamide. And another functional group they are having is the hydrazine. So from the carbamide, we can take the carb and from the hydrazine, we can take the azine. So they are having a suffix carbazine. Carbazine indicates they are the amide derivatives with the hydrazine functional group. So this dacarbazine and procarbazine are the two prodrugs which needs the bioactivation within the liver and after the bioactivation they can act as alkylating agents. Procarbazine can also act by other mechanisms where it can inhibit the DNA as well as RNA synthesis. In this way the carbazines are the carbamide derivatives having the hydrazine moiety 
And similarly, we have another drug is the timozolamide. Here, the suffix zolamide indicates it is having the modified imidazoloamide, which again acts as an alkylating agent. So these are the various types of drugs which are included in the first category, alkylating agents. Now let us go with the second category of drugs, anti-metabolites. These are the drugs which are going to inhibit the metabolic pathways like the folic acid pathway, purine pathway or pyrimidine pathway. So based on that, we have three types of categories within these anti-metabolites. First one is the antifolates. Antifolates can be identified by the two types of suffixes. One is the trexate and the other one is the trexate. Drug with the suffix trexate is the methotrexate. Methotrexate is acting like an antifolate by inhibition of the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme DHFR. This enzyme converts the folic acid into dihydrofolic acid and dihydrofolic acid into tetrahydrofolic acid. So these two steps are blocked by methotrexate and it acts as an antifolate agent. Similarly, drugs with the suffix trexate include pemetrexate as well as raltitrexate. Here the suffix trexate indicates these drugs are going to inhibit one of the key enzymes, the thymidylate synthase enzyme. Thymidylate synthase enzyme can convert the the DUMP deoxyuridine monophosphate into deoxythymidine monophosphate. In this way, thymidine is going to be synthesized from the uridine by the thymidylate synthase enzyme, where the tetrahydrofolic acid along with the one carbon unit is going to be involved in this reaction. So trexates can inhibit this enzyme, thereby they can inhibit the thymidine synthesis. Among these drugs, pemetrexate can also inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. In this way, antifolates can have two types of suffixes, trexate as well as trexate. Second type of drugs are the purine analogs. So here the drugs can have the suffix based on the sugar moiety. So this is the structure of the arabinofuranose ring. And this arabinofuranose ring can be attached at the first position with a either purine or pyrimidine ring. In this way, you can have the different types of purine and pyrimidine analogs. But whenever the drug is having the arabinofuranose ring, as a sugar moiety, the suffix can be indicated by arabine. They can also be indicated by abine. So whether arabine or abine indicates, they are having the arabinofuranose ring as the sugar moiety. So purine analogs which are having the arabine suffix include the fludarabine, nelarabine and clofarabine. So all these are the having the arabinofuranose ring as the sugar moiety. And these are attached with a purine ring at the first position. And sometimes these drugs can also be indicated by the name of the purine at the suffix. For example, mercaptopurine. It is ending with the purine, which indicates simply it's a purine analog. Similarly, thioguanine. Here the guanine is a purine analog. And thioguanine is a thiol group containing guanine moiety, which is a purine analog. Similarly, another drug is a pentostatin. Here the suffix statin indicates it's an enzyme inhibitor. And pentostatin can inhibit one of the important enzymes, adenosine deaminase enzyme, which converts the adenosine to inosine. So these are the other purine analogs within the antimetabolites. Now let us the third type of uh, antimetabolites are the pyrimidine analogs. So here the pyrimidine analogs can have the suffix like the cytobine. So here CIT indicates they are the cytosine analogs and abine indicates again they are having the arabinofuranose ring as the sugar moiety. So drugs with suffix cytobine include the gemcytobine, capecytobine, decytobine. And they can also have the another suffix like the arabine. Arabine indicates they are in the arabinofuranose ring as the sugar moiety. So one of the drugs is the cytarabine. So here the suffix arabine indicates the sugar and the prefix CYT cyt indicates the cytosine analog. So these are the pyrimidine analogs having the suffix cytobine and arabine. Similarly, another suffix is the cytidine. Again, here the CIT indicates the cytosine analog. So one of the drug is the azacytidine. And another one is the uracil. Uracil indicates that the uridine derivatives. So one of the drug is the fluorouracil or 5-fluorouracil. In this way, whenever the drug is having the suffix like the cytobine, arabine, cytidine, uracil, all these are the pyrimidine analogs. And here fluorouracil is a uridine analog where uracil indicates a uridine analog and sometimes it can also be indicated by the term ur ur indicates a uridine derivative for example tagafer tagafer is the product of the 5 fluorouracil and this drug is having the suffix ur which indicates a uracil derivative so these are the three types of categories within the antimetabolites 
antifolates, purine analogs, and pyrimidine analogs. Next one is the plant derivatives. So one of the drug in the plant derivatives is the vinca alkaloids. Vinca alkaloids can be indicated by the prefix vin. So two natural vinca alkaloids are the vincristine as well as vinblastine. And from that we can get the synthetic as well as semi-synthetic products like the vinorelbin, vindesin, and vinflonin. All these are the drugs which are related with the vinca alkaloids. And these drugs are acting like the spindle poisons. That means they are going to inhibit the polymerization of the beta tubules. So beta tubules are not polymerized. Thereby they can inhibit the mitotic cell division. Similarly, second type of drugs are the taxanes. Taxanes can be indicated by the suffix taxel. So we have the drugs like the paclitaxel, docetaxel, as well as cabazitaxel. And these drugs are going to stabilize the microtubules so that beta tubules are going to be polymerized into microtubules. But these microtubules are fused and they cannot be involved in the further mitotic cell division. In this way, taxanes also acts on the M phase, but they are going to act by stabilization of the microtubules. Third one is the podophyllotoxins. So these these drugs can be indicated by the suffix poside. So we have two drugs like the etoposide and teniposide. Here the poside indicates that the podophyllotoxins. These drugs are going to inhibit the topoisomerase 2 enzyme, which is one of the important enzymes in the DNA replication. This topoisomerase 2 can produce the nick in the two DNA strands, which results in the relief of the topological strain within the DNA during the DNA replication. Next category is the campothecines. So drugs in this category are having the suffix TICAN. TICAN indicates they are the topoisomerase 1 inhibitors. Drugs like topotican and irinotican are the two drugs which are going to inhibit the topoisomerase 1 enzyme which produces a nick in the one strand of the DNA. So we can easily remember that TICANs are topoisomerase 1 inhibitors whereas posides are topoisomerase 2 inhibitors.